And it's still the breakfast and plus TV Africa. Uh, we're about to talk about INEC and the elections just a few weeks to the 2023 general elections. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has expressed apprehension about the effects, the insecurity in various parts of the country, including the attacks on its facilities, may have on the commission's preparation for the forthcoming elections. Uh, Professor Abdullahi Zuru, chairman of the Board of Electoral Institute, representing the chairman of INEC at an election security training program, also warned that the growing spate of insecurity in many parts of the country may lead to cancellation or postponement of the 2023 general elections. Although INEC's chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, has reiterated the commission's determination to go ahead with the elections as scheduled. Speculations are rife that the commission may have no option in the face of heightened insecurity. And joining us right now to look at the uh, issues, first, INEC's preparation ahead of the presidential and national assembly elections uh, is a public affairs analyst, Ambrose Igboke. Ambrose, it's good to have you join us. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me here. All right, then. What are your thoughts now, uh, looking at the concerns of Abdullahi, uh, Zuru, and also juxtaposing that with uh, that of the uh, umpire's chairman, Mahmoud Yakubo? Well, I don't know what is happening in INEC hierarchy. Um, last week also, we had a national commissioner for INEC that say that, uh, just reiterating what um, uh, Professor Zuru, uh, Mr. Zuru has said that, uh, you know, because of his security, INEC may postpone the election or even cancel it. Uh, Professor Yamahu Yakubu, the chairman of INEC, came out to counter that last week and said the election sh should hold. Uh, again, Professor Yakubu came up yesterday at Chatham House in London to uh, state that uh, the election was hold. Uh, barely the same day, uh, somebody from INEC hierarchy, who represented even the chairman in a function, is uh, giving a conflicting uh, you know, assertion that uh, election may not hold. Uh, so it is becoming very worrisome that uh, the hierarchy of INEC is speaking different languages and they are not in consonance with this particular issue. And I just hope that somebody is not taking us for a ride, that somebody is not trying to play on the intelligence of Nigerians, and that somebody is not planning something sinister by trying to hoodwink us to postpone the election. Uh, the, the insecurity in the land cannot and does not prevent INEC from holding uh, these elections. And INEC must hold the elections because it's a constitutional thing. Other constitu uh, by, uh, you know, insecurity has been going on in the country, just as we have it. And other constitutional things are taking place. There is a government in place. Uh, the government are receiving allowances. There are uh, salaries being paid. There are uh, uh, budgets being appropriated, budgets being spent. We are, the government is borrowing money. Uh, so everything, is, is, is the, the banks are working. Uh, communities are, uh, you know, largest uh, people are moving around. Therefore, everything that, you know, constitutes uh, a normal social life or economic life is going on. We agree, and we, uh, you know, we are in agreement that there are security issues in some parts of the country. But I, I want to reiterate here that in 2015 election, uh, almost 17 local governments in this country, uh, we had foreign flags hoisted on them uh, by the terrorist group, Boko Haram. Yet, we had elections. We didn't see, uh, because uh, uh, whooping 17 local governments, that's of the several that's in the local government, was under siege. We had elections. Therefore, and even the results were declared from that uh, from such local governments. So, anybody who is not saying because of uh, this pockets of insecurity that will not hold the election, that person does not love Nigeria. That person is uh, planning something mischievous for the country, and that person does not wish the country well. Therefore, the person is very unpatriotic. Uh, and I think some people are flying the kites, and Nigerians should rise up now and resist and pull down that kite that's been flown. Because nobody can take Nigerians for a ride. The elections are scheduled to hold, and the elections should hold according to the laid down, uh, you know, rules and regulations and laws guiding our election. And so that by May 29, there can be successful handing over of uh, power as the elections take place. And anybody who is going to that contrary is wishing Nigeria evil.
But what do you think that their legal, you know, uh, provision for postponement of cancellation of, of an election, maybe in the electoral there's act no, or the constitution? There's no state of emergency. There's no state of emergency in Nigeria. Uh, Nigeria, the entire, the entire country is not shut down. Our aviation is working. Our telecoms are working. Our commerce and industries are working. So there's no state of emergency anyway. Why should we now, when it gets to election, because some people are trying to entrench some interest and they're telling us that uh, uh, the, the, because of you may be cancelled also. I don't agree with that. And many Nigerians don't agree with that. And Nigerians should rise up and stop this before it starts escalating. Mm. Well, but um, let's also still look at, uh, you know, the issue of insecurity and the fact that a lot of persons have raised concern, which has also given rise to the thoughts of uh, a case or considering cancellation or postponement of the election. Uh, what, what do you think about all of these attacks? We've seen several attacks, you know, especially in the southeastern part of Nigeria, where, you know, INEC offices are being attacked or police stations, however. Uh, th don't you think that this would have an impact on the elections in terms of, you know, voter turnout, in terms of uh, voter apathy? What have you? Okay, so that might just be one and the same thing, but those who will be disenfranchised and other issues. Don't you think that this would have, you know, a major impact on the elections? When you are doing a comparative, when you are doing a holistic assessment of a situation, you look at it critically and try to see what percentage. When you do a risk analysis, you see what percentage of risk does it pose. All the things happening, the percentage of risk it pose is, is not... Uh, you know, strong enough an argument to postpone the elections. As I said earlier, there were more potential risks, a monumental risk in 2015, more than we have now. Yet, the federal government went ahead and they conducted an election. We had war in our hands. These are not even pockets of banditry or whatever. We have external aggression. We had it in 2015. Where, like, there are some territories in the country were actually captured and flags hoisted in, in up to 17 local government areas of the country. But elections held. So, whatever pockets of uh, uh, violence, insecurity we are having right now cannot even be compared to the kind of uh, uh, situation we had in 2015. The situation we had in 2015 was even far worse than we have now. Yet, elections held. So, there is no excuse whatsoever not to have an election. Yes, it may affect uh, some uh, low percentage in, in the terms of turnout and the rest, but it cannot in overall, uh, you know, make us postpone or cancel the election. And but more so, Nigerians are more resolved now than ever to want their votes to count. And we can see the enthusiasm uh, that has greeted the election. Even the youth that used to play football on uh, election day, you can see a lot of them turning out to get, get their PVCs. So 2023 election is very different from other kinds of election. And let me tell you what. When you check elections in the past, especially the early times of 2003, 2007, and 11, you will find out that uh, most of the time, INEC offices were not uh, tampered with the way it's going, uh, going on now. Why? Because the people who, who are masters of uh, circumventing our election, we always wait till after the election to start ballot buses, to, uh, to uh, fabricate resorts, suites, uh, to, uh, you know, truncate the process after the election. They'll just give any figure, and I, they will announce figure. But because of technology, especially this use of PFAS to be used in the 2020 election, they're already jittery because the, uh, the era of ballot, blocks, uh, uh, ballot box snatching is gone. Right now, with the election in 2023, they suppose that you, the, the election result are sent electronically to a database right from the polling units. So there are no uh, opportunities to start. If you start a ballot box, you are just uh, wasting your time because the results have been captured already. Therefore, their plan is to now try to prevent even the election from taking place by destroying INEC materials, by uh, destroying uh, uh, PVCs, a destroyed device machine and some other tools that might be used by INEC. And what uh, the INEC chairman has said that there are backup plans and that the election will go on. So if we have given the INEC chairman the work to conduct this election, why are some elements going behind to say that the election may not hold? Why the man is so are there people who are trying to sabotage his efforts? Those are the questions.
that we should be asking these people say that because of insecurity. When these people not in Nigeria, when insecurity was at most on the highest level, when we lost territories, yet we conducted elections. So these people are not patriotic. So the uh, elections must hold. Well, it, it should hold. I mean, it, that's what is expected of a they democratic. Must hold. Constitutionally, it must hold. Nobody should put us to ransom to tell us that uh, insecurity. What insecurity are they fabricating by going to bomb behind their offices? But so uh, people know what they are saying. You, the you, Nigerians should rise up and make sure that these elements are stopped in their tracks. Mm. Uh, before we get to the case of Paraventure, I mean, that's not what we're saying, but we're just saying just in case. I'd like to ask you if you believe that, you know, INEC as an umpire is ready for these elections. Don't forget that we'll be deploying the beavers uh, for the very first time uh, prior to, you know, 2023. We had the introduction of the smart card readers, you know, for the elections. Now, do you think that we're ready, INEC is ready now, you know, for these elections to conduct a free, credible and fair elections? INEC is ready. Nigerians are ready. The greatest readiness is Nigerian citizens. Because it's when the Nigerian citizens have the eternal watch, eternal vigilance to watch INEC to watch the political parties, to watch the government itself, and to watch those detractors who are trying to tell us the election will not hold. It is when the Nigerian public ensure that these people are on track that we can now say, yes, we are on track. But if we leave them to do whatever they want to do, they will never be on track. Some people, as we speak, are trying to derail INEC, no matter what INEC is trying to do. But INEC has told us that the Beavis machine, they have been tested in some, uh, some elections, with the last one being the ocean for election. It was tested in the over uh, those states. And so they are even going to do a mock trial, which uh, the uh, INEC chairman told us yesterday. And they're going to do a mock trial. And this mock trial, we also make them to consolidate. And they said they have tested each of the machines. And they are all working. That the machine going to deploy. They have been tested, all of them, and they are working. So they are going to do a mock trial in all the local governments. That does not mean that there may not be one or two incidents where they are not there. But INEC, the law says that even when the machine does not work, and there are no elections in any particular polling booth, that the elections can be repeated in 24 hours. Therefore, these things have been put in place in the new electoral law of 2022. And mm -hmm. then we can now use that electoral law to guide our election process. And we cannot be referring ourselves to electoral laws that are, ex that are no more, that are extinct. We should be talking about the new electoral law, what it says. If before, we had incident form and all, all those things in case the... Uh, that the machine didn't work those days. But now we don't have even incidents. There's no room, room for uh, manual manipulations in this election, according to what INEC is saying. No incident form, no registry, no uh, you know, uh, voting outside the beavers. So what the law provides that in case there's a, a system failure, then they can repeat the election uh, under 24 hours. And uh, that I think that is fair enough. INEC has told us they are ready. Our work as citizens of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is to ensure that we support INEC to ensure that any other Ambrose, person who is trying uh, to sabotage within or without INEC, that we report them to the security agencies and such people are arrested. Okay. I'd like you to, I mean, we're, you know, moving away now. We're just going to call it a wrap in no time. But uh, are there issues as an analyst, public affairs analyst, and someone who's very, very positive about, you know, our democracy in Nigeria, are there, you know, areas or are there things you think that INEC should pay attention to or, you know, Everybody, I mean, because it's our election, we're all involved. What do you think that we should consider? Are there other factors that we should consider in the preparation of our elections? Oh, well, first of all, is Nigeria as, as a whole should concentrate on the effort of it, intels, that is intelligence uh, reportage and gathering. We should be on the lookout. We should be on the lookout for those who are trying to truncate the election. We should supply the security agencies information that will uh, help them to work. Then secondly, INEC should increase the social education and awareness. Political parties should do that too. And then uh, the National Retention Agency, I think that agency is uh, almost dead. We are not hearing anything from them. They should please wake up and start, you know, uh, doing uh, some sensitization for Nigerians, especially on how to vote. At this time, we are going to have to vote uh, with the index finger, making sure it doesn't cross the line. These are the things people will start uh, learning uh, uh, from now on. Then, to ensure that uh, INEC should also ensure that all his backup systems are activated. Because people will try 
some undesirable elements to try to attack the software. They will try to attack the hardware. They will try to attack the system. They should ensure that there's a backup, especially a cloud backup and other things to ensure that no results uh, are lost. Then the security agencies. This is the time to train. Uh, thank God, in the end of the report you just mentioned, they, were, they say there's a training going on for security agencies. Yes, the security agencies, this is the time to train them to be disciplined, to be a police, uh, to be uh, uh, not partisan, to ensure that they, they, they treat the election as a Nigerian aspect and not somebody giving them command to, side, to take one side or the other. Therefore, for the youth, this is the time to concentrate. This is the time to ensure that your vote counts. This is the time to defend your vote. When you come to vote, let's try to mobilize yourself All right. to ensure that nobody... We have to go now. For and nobody for, uh, something else. Uh, we have to go. But, of course, the conversation will continue until the elections are over. Thank you so much for always making our time to be with us right here on The Breakfast. Thank you for having me. And that's the size of our conversation this morning on the show. Ambrose Igboke, a public affairs analyst, uh, joined us this morning to talk about INEC preparedness for the 2023 elections. Now, most importantly, it's that you get your PVC and please do not sell your vote. OK, do not sell your vote because your vote is your voice. And your vote is your power. If you missed out on any part of it, it's fine to follow us on Facebook. Twitter, Instagram, and do subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa, Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Messier Boko. Have a great morning.